Hello, everyone. It's, it's really very um, gratifying and fortuitous that we're ha we have such a, a, a diversified and multidisciplinary group of people who are either from the region, work on the region, or, or do both. And really, my, um, my, my job today is just to give, sorry, is it on? okay. So um, my job today is just to go over some selected indicators, development indicators on the region, to give you a little bit of background and focus um, that will help you um, just facilitate your, your voting process uh, for our four objectives that uh, Pascal had just mentioned. Uh, of course, um, I understand that you know, with, with, with all your expertise, um, it's like preaching to the choir, but, but I will, I hope that, that at least the indicators will, will just provide some, a bit of focus about our um, objectives. So we have the four objectives. And um, the first is reducing rural poverty. Uh, the second is increasing food security or enhancing food security and improving nutrition and health. Um, the third, improving sustainability of natural resources, and the fourth, enhancing opportunities for and the participation of women. They're not placed in any order. They're just, um, they're just stated as points here. And for each objective, we're going to try and, and, and give um, two selected indicators. Uh, they're by no means a comprehensive list of indicators that would exist for each of these objectives. However, they just, we feel that they, they may portray the message that we want to give um, to you um, to hopefully focus um, for, the, for the next uh, step. So let's take a look at the first objective, which is reducing rural poverty. Um, if we take a look at the GDP per capita for the region, um, this is one of the indicators that, that we have chosen. And um, we, we list all the Arab countries, Turkey and Iran, and we put there, we, we use or we map um, the average for the Arab world, we map the average for the global average for the GDP per capita, and for uh, the GDP per capita for low and middle income countries. We also plot the individual countries in the, in the region against um, these averages, and we can see that um, on average, really, the, the Arab world doesn't do that, that terribly um, that doesn't do terribly compared to the world and does uh, slightly better than lower income and middle income, uh, lower and middle income countries. However, if you rank the countries, um, you find that there are definitely discrepancies in the GDP per capita because we, we do know that, that the country is very diverse um, and we find that on average, um, all but a handful of countries make the um, the average for the Arab world, however, the last five or six don't. Um, the next um, indicator that we would just like to point out to is uh, we try to, to, to bring or illustrate rural and urban poverty in the region. You can see that the sample size, are not really the sample size, but there are a reduced number of countries that we can show for this indicator which again stresses the, 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 the theme that has been going throughout the entire um, conference that we don't have access to data. If it's there, we don't know it's there. If it, and, and even if it is there, we really cannot get it. So these are um, the only countries we could find both poverty at, um, poverty at the rural uh, level and at the urban level. And we can see clearly that rural poverty overall for all these countries is significantly higher than urban poverty. Okay, so so far I've really used the standard indicators that um, come out of official estimates. Um, indicators we're really all used to using, we're all used to seeing in reports. And if we go ahead and do this and try to plot the poverty growth path um, for the region, we can take a look, if you take a look at the, the slide or the, the figure on the left, um, the figure on the left measures percentage of poor people along the y-axis and GDP per capita, um, sorry, the growth of GDP per capita. So it's really a relationship between uh, poverty and growth. And we find that um, typically we, we find the 
uh, consistent results that usually with higher growth, it translates into reduction of poverty. If we take a look at the global pattern or the global path, uh, we find that um, the world has been doing well in translating po uh, growth into poverty reduction. And so has the Arab um, countries, Iran and Turkey too. They've been actually doing um, better than the global average in translating, uh, rural, uh, translating growth into poverty reduction. And we've also plotted three, the trends of three countries. And let's just take a look at Egypt, um, where we see that the declining trend is there, as we expect, as, as we've seen through the literature. And um, so the picture is sort of consistent to what we've been hearing and what we've been reading about in official estimates. However, um, we've been going through, we've been mentioning this throughout our um, conference is we don't believe that poverty indicators based on income alone are enough or sufficient to really give us a comprehensive picture of, of uh, what's been going on in the region. So um, we take another indicator as a proxy, which is st child stunting. And using that indicator, we uh, find the relationship between, or we find the relationship between nutrition and growth. So using the same methodology, we plot nutrition and growth, where we measure the percentage of stunted children um, to GDP growth for the region. And when we take a look at that, we find a, a rather different picture that comes up. Um, the declining trend is there, meaning that growth has been translated into um, a reduction in child stunting, which, which is an overall good message. However, when we come and take a look and compare how the region as a whole has fared compared to the, to the world, to the global average, we find that it hasn't really been doing as fantastically better as, as we have seen in, in, in that slide on the left. And if we take a look at Egypt again as a focus country, we find that our indicators for child stunting or the indicators for child stunting have actually been increasing since 2003. So clearly some, something is, 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 not, is not really um, going as, um, as, as, as we have always read or have, as, as the official estimates actually predict or say. So moving from that and, and, and into the next objective, we would like to take a look at food security or food insecurity. And in order to take, really take a, a good look at food security within the region or food insecurity within the region, we need to take a look at both the micro and the macro um, dimensions of food insecurity. So following from, from, from what I just said, where we use child stunting as a poverty proxy or a welfare proxy for the region, we find that um, we map, we, you've seen this map, um, uh, Clemens has, has, has shown that map, um, Olivier and so has Jean-Francois, I think, um, he's shown that map. And this map maps, well, uh, for lack of a better word, um, micro level food insecurity for the region. And what we do is we rank um, the, that indicator um, uh, against the, in, the entire list of countries that we do have for the world and we classify them um, and we find that um, each country has varying degrees of prevalence of child stunting. And for example, let's, let's just focus on Libya, which shows a 21% of um, prevalence of child stunting um, uh, to portray its micro-level food insecurity. And as I said, because, because we want to focus on both micro and macro levels, we move to our macro level food insecurity indicator, which really measures the percentage each country uses of its foreign exchange earnings to buy food imports. So once we move to that macro level indicator, we find that, again, just for consistency of comparison, uh, Libya uses 2.4% of its foreign exchange earnings to finance its food imports. And whereas before, Libya had a moderate degree of food insecurity, according to our micro level indicator, because it had a prevalence, a child stunting prevalence of 21%. Um, on the macro level, if we had just looked at the macro level, it really ranks low um, on the food insecurity 
indicators. So clearly we need both a micro and a macro perspective in order to form some type of comprehensive um, in, um, view. So moving from that to our next objective, our next, next objective talks about sustainable resources or maintaining sustainable resources, natural resources for the region. One of, our in, one of the indicators we use is the share of the population using improved drinking water source. Again, we have the three averages there for the three regions and the individual countries. We can see it's really not that terrible except for the last handful or so of countries. And however, if we take a look at the water stress and economic growth outlook for the region through 2050, we find that we can better classify the countries within the region to measure their projected uh, water stress that they would face against their projected GDP growth, per capita growth. And we find that um, according to such, the countries follow differing patterns of the combination of both high or low growth and high or low water stress as an index. Our final indicator is the participation or the inclusion and participation of women in, um, in the economic activity for the region. This is the first indicator that we use, the ratio of girls to boys in primary and secondary school education. Uh, again, we have the three averages, but we can see that for the region and for the lower and middle income countries and the global average, there's really no difference. And even if we take a look at the individual countries, we find that on the whole, it, they seem to be doing pretty well for that indicator. However, if we want to take a further look, a deeper look down into how that previous ratio of girls to boys in primary and secondary school education has been doing, has it been translating into participation in the labor force, we find that the picture changes. The world average, the global average for the percent um, of women employed in non-agricultural sector, sorry, the percentage of em employed individuals in the non-agricultural sectors who are women um, are close to 36% on the global um, average. For the Arab world, it's really very low. It's close to 17%. Not only that, if we even measure the, the, the um, if we measure the individual countries to those average, we find that there's, a, there's really a huge discrepancy. So on that, on that end, we really haven't been doing so well. So what, what does this mean? I mean, can, can we draw a conclusion? Um, the indicators that we've just, and again, these are just selected, only selected development indicators. There are many more that we can discuss. Um, the indicators are quite high. Um, and they do fall short of our objectives that we want to reach. At the same time, the poverty and income inequality indicators, and more broadly, the deficiency of social indicators, are likely higher than the official estimates show. Also, we need a multi-sectoral approach to address the challenges and to move forward for the region. And then we're back to economics 101. We have unlimited wants and very, very limited resources. And so we really need that to prioritize the fund allocation, the funding that we have to research, to the research and policy agenda that, that, that you are going to decide we need for the region. So ultimately, it's really your decision, it's your input, and um, hopefully you will um, decide that, that this is the way to, do, to go. Thank you very much.